everybody, Dauntless here, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing Space Quest 1, the remake. Now the reason I'm doing this now and not doing Space Quest 5 is, not only did I get a request, but I also realized that chronologically this is the next game in the series. Uh, this was released in, let's see, it was August of 1991, whereas Space Quest 4 was released in March. Now, eventually, Space Quest IV got its own remake, which added in all the narration and stuff like that. Space Quest I was released before that remake ever took place. The uh, Space Quest I VGA, anyway. Uh, so it does not have any of the narration. So you get to listen to me go and do a terrible job of narrating again. Uh, there's another issue with this particular one, and it's one that's in Space Quest I VGA and Space Quest V and Space Quest VI. And that is that darned copyright protection. Basically, I'm going to have to look up a couple codes in the middle of the game at some point. So I'm going to hope and pray that it does not glitch out the game at all. Uh, otherwise, it's going to make it very difficult to make this video. And basically what I'd have to do is make sure I go out into Windows without destroying DOSBox. And I've been trying that before, and what happens is all of a sudden the user interface messes up really bad. But anyway, let's get this show on the road. Welcome to DOS, by the way. Uh, another issue, uh, when I tried to run it from Steam, their interface did not work. It glitched out, so I had to download my own DOS box program, which, you know, I already had it and everything for all my old games. And I basically copied the program from the Steam uh, folder into my DOSBox folder, and now it works just fine, as you will see. And I'll speed it up just a little bit there with the DOSBox, because it makes it run nice and smooth. There we go. Aw, the one fizzled out. That's running perfect. Perfectly synced to the music. That's what you're aiming for. This is a really accurate remake of the original song, too. Like, it takes the original song and adds that little bit in there. When I was a kid, I used to be really disturbed by that, uh, by the, uh, thing moving backwards, the comet. I don't know why, I was really young at the time, and every time I saw that I was like, oh, creepy! Overall, I'd have to say, this is a very accurate remake of the original game. There is a lot that is very same. Romulan ship from the original series, Star Trek. Uh, they didn't change a lot of the puzzles. Uh, most of them are the same. There's a few little quirks here and there just to throw off people who have played the original. So if you had played this for the first time, you couldn't walk all over it. Also, everything's been transposed into 3D graphics, so... You can now see that the Arcada apparently looks like a plucked chicken, and the Deltar now looks like a giant mantis. Which I actually love. That's kind of a cool ship design. That's one hungry mantis too. It's going after that uh, game hen pretty quick. <laughs> As we join our story, the crew of the Arcada is returning home to Xenon after a successful mission developing the Star Generator. Exhilarated by their accomplishments, they are oblivious to the fact that a sinister craft approaches rapidly from behind. I'm getting my timing done really good in this one. A 
somewhat spastic research droid blows by and it is. Perhaps you could provide some relaxation therapy instruction to reduce its level of tension. I doubt it. You're startled by the sound of an alarm. Breaking through it, the intercom crackles with the frightened voice of a technician shouting that the Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. The transmission ends abruptly in a sound storm of white noise, soon overtaken by the cold din of silence. Distract sequence is engaged. That sounds good. 15 minutes till detonation. I don't want to be distracted! You hear the overly cheerful voice of the ship's computer say what you just heard. Okay, so, again, everything is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, I will have to take some notes here, because I remember he gives me some, uh, info. I'll just put this thing on so I don't have to constantly move it around. Ah! Sorry. Ow! Oh, come on. There we go. Perfect. Ah, <sighs> paracord bracelet. Made by a friend, actually. Okay, so all those notes are done. That's from Space Quest 4. I still got them! And there's my pen. And now I've got less than 15 minutes before everything goes to hell. This is a Model DX cartridge retrieval unit. Its function is to retrieve and return cartridges from and to the storage unit. It is currently empty. This is where the sophisticated electronics for the complete data archive system are housed. This is the operation control. This is the operation console of the data archive unit. There is a CRT and a chair. Oh, good. Oh, and like most, let's crank that speed up. Yeah, it's maybe a little too high. Just a little bit down. There we go. Okay. Eh, yeah, that seems a little too high still, but I'll stick with it for now. You hear footsteps. You search Jerry's body and find a key card. It's all that remains of Jerry, one of the few techno dudes aboard who sometimes tolerated your company. Your low clearance excluded you from visiting him during the performance of his duties in the elegant lower-level airlock of the Arcada. You hear footsteps. The remake on the appearance of those are, is actually pretty cool. The door opens. A man you recognize as one of the head lab scientists stumbles into the room. He appears to be in serious need of some abdoceal abdomen filler. The humor has been slightly updated too to be more like Space Quest 4. After only a few steps, he hits the floor with a dis disconcerting thud. That was pretty disconcerting. Bloop. His lips move. The Star Generator is in danger! The Arcada is under attack. You better... <coughs> <coughs> you better get off this scow if you value your life, Wilco. Black holes. That's when you want to write down. Just before his systems cease, all functions short of decay, he looks over toward the shelves full of cartridges and utters black holes. With one last gasp, his lifeless form slumps to the floor. And this is where I hope and pray I can get the thing to work. So I need to jump down here into my handy dandy manual and write down the code for black holes, which is a funky little exclamation thing, a couple little lines with a couple more things. And these are the same symbols as in Space Quest 4, actually. Alright, and now back to our game. Okay, everything seems to be working. I just spent three minutes trying to get this thing. Those buttons don't seem to be functioning properly. Okay, so we have up down thing, we have dot dot dash thing, we have the chair, and this. 
Aha! Success! Cartridge found. Now retrieving. Good! You better retrieve that cartridge. Mine! Now, of course, if you happen to, uh... You hear footsteps. Okay, you'll be able to see them this time. See? They look freaking amazing. Oh no! This is the upper support for the star generator when it is affixed to the pedestal. You find a small but heavy device affixed to the base of the star generator platform. It appears to be magnetic. It must be how the aliens upset the force field protecting the unit. Which actually explains how they managed to do that. The lifeless body of Randy, one of the lab technicians, lies sprawled at your feet. Those laser blasts are nasty. Why, you can't distinguish one exposed organ from another. Could you distinguish them before? Yet another crewman's motionless body reduces the shine of the floor wax. Hugh doesn't look too neat and clean with his lungs hanging out like that. Ah, Does somebody sound bitter? Maybe stole your favorite mop. It was my mop! And there goes that robot again. He's definitely getting some travel time. And remember in the other one I said that that one little section was actually very difficult for us to figure out? Well, the reason is because when you go across here, the guards guards will show up, or patrol will show up, and you cannot make it across the room at all. You cannot make it. What you have to do is hide behind the giant mouse here, with the joystick nearby. And we could not figure this out for the longest time, because in the other one, all you have to do is get across the room. Failing to notice anyone or anything in the room, the Syrian guards decide to check elsewhere. Way to go, Roger! I like how they're still not totally making fun of Roger Wilco yet. On the screen is some green dude you've never seen the likes of. He seems to be talking, but the audio is out in this area of the ship. Fine. Through this window, you can see down into the pod bay. A pod sits awaiting on the launch track. The large bay doors are currently closed. Alright. Open! And now I grab this key card. The items in my inventory are huge. Like the icons are massive. You slide the key card into the slot. The lock releases with a satisfying click and the elevator doors slide open. It's the, okay, on this door here, that is the Mirror Federation symbol from the original series, actually from all of Star Trek, the uh, Terran Empire. Ten minutes till detonation. You notice some sort of gadget in the drawer. And, might I say, I love this spacesuit far more than the one in the original. The original one looked classic, this one is awesome. That goldfish bowl helmet, I swear, once we saw that, every single character I ever created had a goldfish bowl helmet. There are no controls on this panel. It is populated only by cages and readouts. It's because it's up here you gotta... Whee! You can actually fall to your death over here, too. All right. The lever causes forward propulsion of the pod when powered up. The survival kit contains the basics for deep space survival. This is the auto nav button. When operative, it allows the pod to navigate to the closest habitable planet. 
This is the power button for the escape pod. <clears throat> this button is not to be pushed at any time. This option only works when clear of the Arcada. Not actually how it worked in the original, but... As you slide the throttle forward, you can feel the Arcada start to shake. What, with ten minutes left? Nice sound effects. Corona! You can tell they wanted to use every color they could. <laughs> I thought that was the time warp effect. Wait a minute! <laughs> I can see my windshield wiper trying to keep the space gnats off as we blast through whatever the heck that was supposed to be. Uh, and there you get a little glimmer so you can see the uh, glass piece. Thank you for flying Arcada Getaway Podlines. It's nearly been a pleasure serving you. Tell a friend if you've got one. That was the kit, by the way. All right, so, a survival kit. Upon opening the survival kit, you discover a Xenon army knife and a canister of dehydrated water. Let's get out of here. Clear! Aw, he's so cute! He's blue, that means he's awesome. Oddly enough, a rather bright plant grows in this otherwise flora-free area. I will try taking that. You snag a small cluster of leaves from the gooey plant. <laughs> you stuffs... That stuff sticks worse than Fortnite old undergarments. It's a good thing your gloves are Tefloid coated. I don't want to know about your undergarments, I'm sorry. Nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot an object hurtling from the greenish atmosphere toward the parched surface you currently occupy. And we all know what this is. A slightly higher res version of that droid. I kind of liked how it was pitch black in the other one. Rats! If your eyes don't deceive, that's a Syrian spider droid. They must have detected the escape pod leaving the Arcada. The spider droid must have been sent along to finish any unsettled business. After the jarring impact, small panels open through which legs sprout. You recall reading in an old issue of Space Piston magazine that this droid was designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when close proximity to the target has been achieved. There we go. Okay, alternate solution to the ORAT problem. You shiver at the sight of the spider droid entering the cave on its spindly legs. The cold metallic body searches for something to get up close and personal with. This could be interesting. <laughs> now that was cool! That killed two problems with no stones! And I just saved myself a ton of time, and I still have my water. You reach down and take the ORAT part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Still not wanting to think about that.
you'll notice that again on this one uh it's more of a desert whereas in the original i didn't get quite the desert feel from it i also didn't have to worry about the rock throw thing I'd say that the widening of those cracks is an excellent indication that this thing is not a truly stable unit. And don't you hate the way it makes your brain bounce around like a handball in that spare cranial space? See, they were definitely teasing Roger at this point, but... A nice look of water would sure hit the spot right about now. So that's why you keep the dehydrated water. Mmm, that dehydrated water really hit the spot. That should keep you going for a bit longer. Yeah, uh, I always felt that the original was a lot more of like a, almost a, it ha I don't know. It was more like a canyon, like a little bit of grass here and there, some plants, stuff like that. I never got the impression it was actually a desert. But this does make it seem more alien. Hey, what's the deal here? That elevator doesn't lower. It sucks. You flex those incredible muscles you wish you had, but you're barely able to snap loose the previously fractured stalagmite tip. Okay, now remember, originally in the last game, all you had to do is walk by it. If you do that this time, though, it does not quite work. Oh, here, I'm going to do this while I'm remembering. Uh, there's my device. You switch the gadget on, which sounds like a uh, original series communicator. So I try to go around it this time, and it'll grab you. Crunch, crunch, crunch! You've been snatched out of existence by the tentacled beast looking beneath the grate. You feel the painful sting of digestive fluids. Don't stop now. We're having so much fun watching you. Okay. Uh, how you do it this time is you go over here. And then you grab this little sticky thing. And you have 8 million ways of getting the sticky stuff, by the way. They have no shortage on ways of getting you that sticky stuff. You can either get it from the plants outside, you can get it from inside the cone in your inventory, or you can even get it from the stalagmite piece. It's a great... Excuse me. It's a great monster. At the moment, he's stuck on something. Fortunately, not you. I'll take it. This is a pulsating steam geyser. This is an odd closed door with no apparent mechanism for opening it. Well, I happen to already know how this works. Thunk. Okay. <laughs> this was starting to get more into the deaths. Observe. <laughs> I love that scream. Well, Scott, it looks like Roger has done it again. It sure does, Mark. Let's run that one again with the aid of our new How He Blew It Cam TM and Chalkboard TM. Scott Murphy and Mark Crow. The two guys from Andromeda. I have to say that... I have to say that carefully, Mark. Every time you mention something with a co trademark or copyright, the lawyers come out to feed. Instant replay! Now this is where Roger makes the fatal move. I should narrate that like it's a golf tournament. And we can all see the result of that mistake. I don't know about you, Scott. Personally, I, I like how exactly what I'm messing with before I actually mess with it. I guess I'll know better next time. Ouch. <clears throat> I can do better than that. I can do better than that. So, I'm guessing sticking my hand in there is bad, but let's see what happens when I lick this stuff. You lean over the to drink from the tempting pool of liquid. As your lips touch the fluid, you feel a pain which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they mean when they say, don't drink the water. Duel. 
<laughs> He's still reaching up there. That's right, you have no head. That darn pool must have been filled with acid. You obviously can't go in living that way. Yeah. That would be unfortunate. And another amazing death. Rump. Well, Scott, it looks like Roger has done it yet another time. It sure seems that way for those who might have missed that last move by Roger. Or if, like me, you just want another look at it, let's roll it again. Instant replay! You've got to give some high marks for truly fine execution. We'll have to give a strong 9.8. You found quite a number of forms to transform yourself into. This is the first time you've been wafer style. Okay. Piece of glass. In the lasers. Bye bye. <laughs> you have quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying and fusing it into a state of inoperability. Hey, I say give me my walk icon. Now trudge. One tubby tubby. I will say that the music in this one is slightly The intro song is great and there's some good songs, but overall like this one right here I just don't hear it as much it's not as good as Space Quest 4 alright, we all remember this my device is active I'm ready to go I have the guts as soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly, you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. A strange, unknown force has taken over. A massive holographic image appears before you. 2001 A Space Odyssey? It begins to speak. So you have found your way to my hollowed chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. I have been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears that you are up to the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. In other words, you're in the Leather Express, slapping the dogs, pounding the sand, and you'll, you'd kill for a fine ride. You are obviously in need of transportation. Oh, thank goodness. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. On the surface lives a beast called Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence or your con of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Bring to me evidence of the beast Orat's demise and we'll talk. You drop the Orat part to the ground, the vision is silent as the dainty morsel splats to the dry soil. You are startled by a sudden, by a rumbling. Suddenly, an oddly shaped door comes into view and slowly opens. You hear a voice different this time, beckoning you to step forward. Step forward! Close the door! Where do you think you are, a barn? When you step through, the door slides closed with a faint hissing sound. You are alone in a large room full of strange equipment. Please don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you. Dang right it is. 
We have promised you transportation. It is a skimmer. It hovers approximately a half meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance become a rare, moist meal for him. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Olin's Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. I am sorry, this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you are ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. I'm not the one with the funky hair there, dude. I'm not, okay, not that funky. And now, let's check out this here, uh, thing. Whoever shall read this, my name is Dr. Slash Vol Hall. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcada. We have just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I have come to believe that our progress has been monitored by others, like a relative. I fear that the Syrians may have learned of our mission. If my fears prove to be true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. The Star Generator is a miraculous device, used as intended. It will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it could cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave, enslave all who oppose the Syrians. Encoded within the cartridge are all the plans and instructions for the construction of the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate of the Star Generator with this information. Please guard it with your life and return it to the Xenon ruling body as quickly as possible. 7993 Okay. <sighs> Which is different than the one in the original. A five minute time will begin to count down. Beware anyone within five kilometers of the star generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful and good luck! Okay, I got it, sir. It's okay. I should take that. And you know that sound is the sound of an upcoming arcade sequence. Oops! Had the darn thing in reverse! I hope nobody saw that. Whee! I find it funny that Roger still doesn't speak very much in this. Play or skip? I played the last one. You know what? I have the right to skip this. Look, Ma, no hands! <laughs> I'm sorry to anybody who wanted to watch me do that, but I really don't like the arcade sequences in these games. <laughs> Apparently my lungs did not like that very much. After a truly stone-crushing journey, yep, totally hit it. Uh... Okay, yes. Um, crushed it! First try. You have miraculously arrived safely in Olin's Flats, and just in time, too, because the skimmer's power cell has been drained. It will take some time to recharge itself. This place isn't quite what you had expected. It is semi-bleak at best. Ooh, hi. Excuse me. An odd-looking fellow is lounging against the wall of a nearby building, watching you with a great deal of interest. I am getting my rape whistle out. Say, pal, I couldn't help notice your skimmer. It's a genuine 86 play EDs GL. I've been looking everywhere for one of these babies. Nice eyeball. How'd you like to unload it for the unheard of price of 25 buckazoids? No! Fine, be that way. Idiot, what does he think? I'm like, I'm just gonna hand off my skimmer for nothing? Yeah, don't forget the keys! Give me the keys! You remove the skimmer's keys from its dashboard. 
The sign is very unusual. It looks as though the whole building has been constructed around the wreckage of a crashed spaceship. Or maybe the traffic around here is just really awful. I wouldn't actually be surprised if it was the latter. Oh, there's the uh, star, the Enterprise's uh, pod in the background. I think, oh. Hey buddy, you drive a hard bargain. This is my final offer. And I'm only making it cause I can see you need it pretty bad. I'll make it 30 buckazoids and I'll throw in this swell jetpack. It was previously owned by little old Thark who only flew back and forth the flea butt on Sunday. It works great in zero gravity, you'll love it. Sure! Great. Back. Jetpack? Glad we could do business. I'll just take that key, thank you kindly. In addition, I'd like you to have these coupons. Good for discounts and free merchandise from some of our local merchants. As a representative of the Olin's Flats Chamber of Commerce, I hope you enjoy your visit to our friendly little community. Why, well, thank you. Coupons are good. Okay. Originally, those guys looked a lot more like ZZ Top. Excuse me. Oh. You get hydrated in these here deserts! This character kind of reminds you of a cute, fluffy little kitten you had when you were a kid. Except that he weighs about 400 kilos and has foot-long, razor-sharp claws and a bad attitude. Some strange blue dude currently monopolizes the Slots Odev machine. I think he's always looking up at the laser up here. This is a seedy little place. Galactic riffraff are seated at the bar. A bearded band is cranking out some of the most popular tunes in the quadrant. There's a slot machine standing near the bar. You notice a sweeper in the corner of the room. It must get messy here. No one seems to notice or care that you have entered the bar. Cute little purple guys, eh? They sure can put away the brew. This character looks like an economy-sized version of your Uncle Buck's toupee. You must be getting dizzy. You're seeing triple. Woof. <laughs> this guy appears to have blown it from Santa Cruz. Uh, I think he looks like a giant banana. Give me a beer. I would like to redeem this coupon for five buckazoids and a free beer. Hold on, Mac. I'll get to you when I can. Oh! <laughs> Here's your five bucks of and free beer. Mmm, it tastes better than it smells, thank goodness. Another one would be nice. I like how it actually hints that you want to get another one. Whoop, apparently I just talk. Yo, how about a refill? I'm busy, wait your turn. Yep, that's a bar, all right. Well, that's your beef, Junior. Want another drink? <coughs> Here you go. Ah, oh, yes, that hits the spot. Just one more should do it. Give me one second. I gotta... Sorry about this. I'm alive again! One more. In the other one, they did not hint that much. You were like... They were like, you need to, uh, figure this out, like, on your own. Yo, how about another refill? I'll get to you in just a sack. So what's your beef, Junior? Want another drink? Here you go. I see. I see you. As you sip another of the odd brews, you overhear someone at the bar speaking. There I was, cruising through Sector IC, when I spot this blip on the scanner! 
so I had to word it, you see. And right there in front of me sits the Deltar. It's just sitting there. My heart starts hyper-warping on me. I figure my milliseconds are numbered. All I can do, think of doing is getting my craft out of there. So I'm reaching for the throttle. All of a sudden, there's this incredible flash of light, you see? And just like that, this little planetoid explodes into a ball of fire. I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. I mold the throttle and got out of there quick, you bet. Ah. Give me two seconds. Let me get that code. Uh-oh. I think that was the one I wasn't supposed to do. Okay. Uh, here's me hoping I haven't totally messed up the game. I normally do a changing of the size on the thing. Yep, that's the problem. Let's see. Can I do this and it'll fix it? Okay, good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> and as you see, it moves across like that. I was hoping I'm praying I wouldn't totally destroy it doing that. All right. So. Now I need money. How am I gonna get money? Well, you might remember I used the slot machine, but this time, I don't have to try and do it fair. By golly, I'm gonna win this. Where's my magnet? <laughs> the only way to really win is to cheat, especially with random crap like this. I find it funny that this one does not have any of the animations on the pictures like in the original. Because the original, you remember the eyeball would move, the skull would open, the cherries would boink, stuff like that. And this one, it seems like it's just a little cheaper. Dang, I'm really cruising through this time. It's almost like I've uh, used some alternative form of coercing the game to uh, help me out here. Aw, <laughs> oh, cherries, that's it, dude. At this point, the electronic machine is going, I gave you cherries, dude. I can't give you anything worse. <laughs> <laughs> You do know normal people have to worry about three skulls, right? Oh, I think this is it. I think it's gone. BAM! You step back nervously as the overheated slot machine begins to sputter and smoke. Ooh. Wow, I guess you overheated the poor old thing. I'll tell you right now. That was impressive. All right, let's get out of here. So I need the droid, you might remember. And because I'm one greedy little sucker, I'm gonna go and root through this guy's debris. Searching through the pile of dust, you find six Bacazoids. Searching through the pile of dust, you find four Bacazoids. Like, literally, you can get money just by doing this. Ah, I guess I'm out. Darn it! I remember one time we managed to do that for like... Maybe I should get like 30 buckazoids out of that one time. Because it, it is a little bit random. Droids be us! All sales final in 1,438 languages on that tiny little piece of paper! Are you related to the Deltar? Greetings, sir. Allow me to show you our fine line of robots otherwise known as droids. We have a wide variety of work slaving, life enhancing, shiny new factory fresh technological wonders of modern engineering wizardry. <clears throat> However, I can see that we would be more, uh, interested in our line of economy priced used robots, wouldn't we? Oh, you're against humans now, are you? Xenonians. Xenons. Whatever. Please observe our robot preview screen. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Well, here I got a coupon. Very good, sir. This coupon entitles you to a reduction of 20% 
in the price of any of our fine previously owned droids. Ah, this model is one of my personal favorites. It was produced exclusively for Droids Be Us by a small planet who used these mechanical warriors to fight their battles. It's a mech warrior. That race killed themselves off, however, and spare parts are nearly impossible to find. Don't bother haggling. This one's worth 55 buckazoids for the parts alone. That would be a 46 buckazoid with your coupon. I don't want that one. This model was originally designed as a family companion, one whose long space vacations. It's, uh, lost in space. However, the manufacturer had to discontinue it due to psychological disorder. Whenever it gets excited, it waves its arms around wildly and yells, Danger! Danger! If you can live with the paranoia, though, it makes a great babysitter. And if you've got kids, you'll appreciate its low, low price of 698 buckazoids. 559 with a coupon. Okie dokie! Ah yes, a truly beautiful piece of machinery. This design rates 5 stars. Although a handsome machine, this robot has a habit of killing people without any real reason. I'm trying to figure out if that's a reference. I'm sure it is, but I'm not catching it. I'd love to sell you one, but every last one I had was snapped up by a movie director from New Japan 4. Sorry. Probably a Gundam type thing. Sucks 9000! The brand name says it all. Sucks is a major manufacturer of refrigerators, dishwashers, and someday even time machines. I just happen to have come of... Ah. I just happen to have one of these in stock. It's been completely reconditioned since its regrettable accident that took the lives of... But of course you wouldn't want to hear about that. Yes, I do! Yes, this dandy compact unit goes for mere 29 buckazoids. 33 with coupon. You can't go wrong when it sucks. I think I'm good. Ah! Silent runnings. Right? Yeah. These little robots are perfect for gardening chores, and they don't mind at all if they're away on space missions for centuries. Yes sir, they may look like they're Kleenex boxes, but they're built to run a long time. And quiet? You bet. <sighs> Silent runnings reverence. We've got a set of three, and you can have them all for just 999 buckazoids. Never gonna get that much, by the way. It's a Dalek! Um, this model has had a bad rep. Unearned, if you ask me. They're just a wee bit too ambitious, is all. And who of us isn't? It's quite an endearing quality, actually. However, we're fresh out of them right now. Nobody seems to survive long enough to trade them in. These are really some of the most useful and all-purpose robots around, and extremely good with children. Of course, they're all in hibernation this time of the century. I could let you have him for just 875 buckazoids. Good grief! This was one of my better bodyguard models, and it also doubled as a radial arm saw. <laughs> what?! If it had one fault, it was probably a tendency to be overzealous. It's no longer available except for demolition purposes. His memory isn't the best, so you'll ha so I'll let you have him for just 512 buckazoids. No. These robots have a bad attitude. You've got to keep them in line or they'll walk all over you. Uh, well, maybe you shouldn't consider buying this particular model. Okay. Oh, no, no, I want to buy this guy. Okay, that was the nav bot there. Unlike the others, he has a fairly generic description.
Oh, come on. You may pick up your purchase at our convenient Droids V Us pickup area located just outside the door and to your right. To your right. Roger's right. Oh, they take you there automatically. <clears throat> Hello, sir. Your new robot will be here in a moment. Wee. Well, there he is, sir. Programmed to follow you around like a whimpering little puppy dog. How humiliating. The droid emits a cheerful chirp, but has nothing further to say right now. Fortunately, you brought it as a pilot, not a conversationalist. All right, let's go get a ship. <clears throat> Allergies kicking in here. Howdy, Bucko! Can I interest you in one of the finest little used spaceships in the galaxy? You look like a man of discerning taste. This one, for instance, is just your speed, er, style, that is. This is quite a unique little unit, never been flown over Mach 3. It was owned by a little old lady from Glansodrome. You have to fly to believe it, and she can be yours for only 99 buckazoids. Only time offer, only. One time only, on, only, ah, my goodness. One time offer only. Thank you. Talk to me, friend. Well... Hey, fellow, wait up! As long you're headed in that direction, why don't you let me show you my other fine spacecraft? No obligation whatsoever to you, pal. Just trying to be helpful to one in need. Yeah. <clears throat> now, just take a gander at these beauty sport. If you see one you like, just give me a hoot. I'll stand right over here. No pressure, absolutely none. Well, there's a man with a good eye. This here's the keenest little scrambler in the hemisphere. Top of the line, handles like a charm. Perfect for cruising the asteroid fields. And she's got all the thrust a guy can need, I tell ya. She's an outright steal at 214 buckazoids. Now, just... Okay, that was what he was already saying. I heard you the first time. I tell ya, I think you've made a wise decision. She's a beauty. The keys are in her. If you have any problems, don't hesitate to come back and tell us about them. Because if there are any problems, like you're gonna survive to say anything. It's been a heck of a pleasure doing business with you. It's a good thing you've already got a pilot droid cause you need one to help you fly that thing. Well, good luck, come again. I actually do like the design of this ship. It is a very classic look. Ugh. Once you are seated snugly in the ship's compact cockpit, the robot moves into a position, and you push the load button. The way the engines activate is kind of cool. How is he going to get around without his uh, little roller things? Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going with my ship? And reference. We have achieved escape velocity. It might help if we were to tell me where we are going. Please indicate our destination on the touchpad in front of you. All right, let's hope I got the right one. Boink. Boink. This is a T thing and then that. Okay, I'm plotting our course. Course is plotted, stand by for warp speed. I never noticed the blinking stuff up there in that earlier screen. I, I guess I never really looked for it. Sensors indicate a large ship in this sector. I wonder who it could be. 
We'll continue to scan for an ID. Scratch, 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 scratch. Whoa! That's a Syrian battlecruiser. We'd better stand off. If we get any closer, they'll detect us for sure, and we'd be a space buttum. A what? Let's head out of here. Okay, boss? Nope! As you exit the ship, you carefully slide the jetpack on your back. You're floating in space just outside the biggest darn spaceship you've ever seen. You see a door. Perhaps it is a way in. definitely changed the look of a lot of this. Like, the Deltar is, well, obviously a totally different design, but the colors and stuff, just the overall look of everything is completely different. It appears to be a decontamination unit, something like the ones used to zap Andromedan cockroaches aboard the Arcada. You wonder what it's here for? Trust me, I'm probably the cockroach. I also like how they kind of... Some of it I don't like, because I, I don't know if I like the complete overhaul on everything. I think a little bit more of a faithfulness to the kind of more classic sci-fi look would have been good. On the other hand, they do explain why that robot even left. And this time I'm going the other way. I'm taking the vent. Your hand by themselves are incapable of opening it. I'm sorry, my nose is just starting to get really intense right now. Let's use this on here. Because last time I used the uh, box, there is kind of a funny little thing with the box you get it in and it's like moving around and banging all over the screen and stuff. This is a vent grill, which appears to lead to another room on the Deltar. It appears to be closed. I'm not close enough to the vent. Oh. With a mighty, wimpy kick, you manage to hurl, hurt your foot. However, the vent grill opens. Haha! <laughs> Uh-oh, you hear someone coming. I don't like how he didn't even notice that I was in there when I when he opened it up. The other one just walked in and pushed the button. That looks a little uncomfortable. And all of a sudden I'm wearing a goofy outfit. Ugh. I really liked the big guys' uniforms, but I guess they wouldn't let me fit in one of those. Darn static cling! Hey, look at that! By the most amazing stroke of luck, you've traded in your extremely conspicuous Xenon spacesuit for a Syrian officer's uniform complete with helmet. Searching the pockets of your newly found disguise, you find the number of possessions you are packing has been greatly reduced. In fact, lost in that limbo void to where socks and baseballs disappear is everything but the data cartridge. Okay, I got it. Ah, oh, where's the, like, use dot on this thing? There we go. It's like right in the center. As you can see, I've started to get back on my usual habit of saving every five seconds. In this pocket of this ugly outfit is a Syrian ID card. The name on the card is Butston Freem. You wonder if this is a common Syrian name, and if it is, you're glad you're not Syrian.
You close your eyes in hopes your death will be quick, but to your surprise, the guard does not notice you. In fact, you think your uniform is that of a higher-ranked Syrian officer worth sucking up to. Cool! And in this one, if you go down there, I'll just show you really quick since I think I've got some, a little bit of time here. I'll show you on my way back. No, I'll show you now. <laughs> I was going to do it on the way back, but on my way back, things are about to blow up and stuff, and everything is going downhill. So you go down here, right? And this machine down here allows you to read that uh, cartridge. So if you forget to do it in the steam area, you can still read it there. Everybody's saluting. I love it. Broom at the ready. The cleaning droid waits for something useful to do. All right. <clears throat> This is the biggest, toughest, not to mention ugliest, Syrian guard you have ever seen. At present, he is diligently guarding the star generator from intruders such as yourself. He's wearing some sort of gadget on his belt, but from here, you can't tell what its purpose might be. Oh, welcome to the weapons dispensary, I guess. I've got an IQ of 5,000, but they feel I'm only good enough to fetch weapons like some whimpering puppy dog. You'll have to show me your ID card so I can scurry off and fetch your weapon. Why, they don't just wire me into the ship's systems so I would know you, who you are even without an ID card is beyond even my supreme intellect. Woof! Somebody likes their job around here. I want the rifle. Oh, how clever. You have an ID card. And my, my, what a <clears throat> lovely photo of a pre-proto-organic biped you have, too. I guess I'll use my vast resources to fetch your silly weapon for you. Please wait here if you can handle such a simple command. A robot serves behind the counter. Whoa, whoa, spelling error. Its appearance is that of a plain and unintelligent droid, but then looks can be deceiving as in your case. Aww. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, this is the part where you get your gun ready. Because you might remember, I lose my helmet. Get out of my way, space spud! Yeah, we cabbage. You over... You overdeveloped avocado! Oh! <sighs> oh, hi. There's the, uh, cleaning droid. <laughs> he steps on you. My, aren't we the clumsy one. Because of your inability to walk without falling on your face, your helmet has been collected by the trash droid. Now you've blown your cover. The Syrians are sure to shoot first and ask questions later. In that case, I need to shoot first. Ha! How do you like them apples? Hey! 
And again, I'd like to say for the record, I'm shooting my way through the entire Deltar right now. Like, this guy is awesome. They make fun of you, but they don't make, and sometimes he's clumsy, but man, uh, he has his like action hero moments. You remove the device from the guard's belt. It looks like you have found the remote control that turns off the force field around the star generator. Okay. <coughs> you press the stud on the remote and the force field around the star generator begins to deplete. Excellent. Excellent. Oh, come on. Uh, seven. Self-destruct engaged. Have a nice day. Well, why, thank you. Now I got five minutes to get out of here before everything blows up. Hey, you're not fair. The last ship gave me 15 minutes. Ugh. I like that other ship's destruct sequence better. It's amazing how many times we did that and then just walk through the ship clearing everything out. And everything always respawns, so... You never really ran out of targets. Our first instance of becoming an action hero and blowing up everything in a ship. <laughs> Kaboom! In bright, fiery letters, too! Nice outfit, green lady. Roger Wilco, we of the people Xenon, extend our limitless appreciation and ex in eternal gratitude for your acts of heroism, at least until Space Quest 2. Because of your bravery, the planet Xenon, and indeed the entire galaxy, has been saved from dominant domination by the evil, not to mention ugly, Sarians. I'm doing great on these lines here. Oh my goodness. It is my honor to present you with the coveted Golden Moth, a symbol of pride and accomplishment to members of your esteemed profession. Thanks. <clears throat> Henceforth, for all time, you will be known as Hero of Xenoth. Well, Roger, you did it. You saved the galaxy, received your profession's most noble tribute, and got the girl. Wait a minute, there wasn't any girl. Sorry, well, you got the mop. Anyway, from now on, Xenon's your oyster. All you have to do now is sit back and let the book and movie offers roll in. Who knows, maybe you'll even have a series. And now, as the sun sets on the peaceful blue planet, Xenon and Roger Wilco's first adventure, yes, I'm afraid there are more. We hope you will remain in your seat long enough to let us express our limitless appreciation. And that song piece was a reference to the ending of Star Wars. Yeah. So there it is, everybody. That is the remake of Space Quest 1. A very good remake. I think there's some things that, as I mentioned before, I'm not too much of a fan of. Uh, I am a fan of being able to skip the arcade sequence. And also skipping the, I guess both arcade sequences, because I was just going to say the slot machine, but <laughs> that was kind of an arcade sequence too. Uh, the music update is fantastic. The graphics are really nice, although I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the architecture now that I think about it. Over the time, I've kind of, uh, of playing, I've, I've kind of 
matured in how I view these games, and 4 is still the best. Uh, I like 3 more than I thought, even with the uh, really horrible... Uh, even with the horrible little uh, mini-games. But the music in this one was amazing, the sound was good, the gameplay was still all there. It's basically everything you'd want in a Space Quest game. Uh, thankfully, in Space Quest V, when it came out, they updated the graphics just a little bit. It looks a little nicer, a little more detailed. Uh, the story is much more complex. It's probably going to take a while for me to get through it. So, uh, I'll hopefully be able to get that one done today. We'll see what happens. I want to do it today, but I don't want to end up uh, taking up three hours of time when uh, we have a whole bunch, if we have, you know, other people here, I don't want to end up, you know, being rude. And I guess that's it. Uh, I don't think there is anything else to say, but thank you very much for watching the video, and hopefully we will see you in the next one. You folks, have a great day.